Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the Excel Club and welcome to the third video in the series of the future of Excel. In the series, we have been exploring some of the capabilities of Excel's Power Tools, Power Pivot, Power Query, and now we're going to look at Power View. In this example, we're going to explore some data using Power View that I've preloaded into Power Pivot and carried out some calculations on. The data set is an imaginary coffee shop chain and we wish to vi use visualizations to explore the data. The first table has product details, the second table has sales details, and the third table has employee details. And then there's a fourth table that contains store details. In this example, we're going to set up a chart and see how visualizations can be used for data exploration and to reveal insights about your business. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, I would suggest that you hop over to the blog post, which is linked below this video. And in that blog post, you'll find the other videos in the series and also some more detail on Excel Power Tools. Also, if you have any questions on this video, do use the comment section on the blog post and not the comment section here on YouTube. Now, getting data into Power View is rather simple. If you get the data in Power Query, you select Load to Model. If you've loaded the data directly into Power Pivot, you need to go back to Excel View and select Insert Power View Worksheet. Once you insert a Power View Worksheet, a new Power View ribbon will appear. And you'll get a blank canvas and all the tables will be shown in the field list, just like in Power Pivot. But instead of just building tables of data, we can now create interactive visualizations. Now, depending on what version of Excel you're using will depend on whether PowerView is preloaded, whether it's an add-in you need to download, or whether you need to enable the PowerView option. But we're not going to look at that in this video. Instead, we're just going to explore how to use Power View to visualize data and see how this can be used to identify trends and other areas in need of analysis. So let's hop over to our model and have a look at this now. Let's look at building our first chart of data. So we have a new Power View window open. And if we go to our stores, let's pull in our outlet name and we'll drop our outlet name in over here and you'll see the outlet name has come in and you can make that bigger and you can make it smaller. Let's also then add in our sales value and we'll drop our sales value in here. Now we have just a normal table of data here. We don't have a chart, we don't have a matrix, we have a normal table. Let's see what happens if we change this to matrix. So when we change this to matrix, this box over here changes. And now what we have is we have rows and we have columns and we have a value. So we could add stuff in here to, let's just say we wanted to add in our year to the columns. And now it breaks the sales further down by year, quite like the way a pivot table would actually work. So I'm going to take the year out of here and we're going to build our first chart. So the first chart we're going to build is going to be a column chart and it's going to be a cluster column chart. Now when I press cluster column chart, watch what happens over in the power fields. So these have all updated now and we have got new fields. So we've tile by and I'm going to show you tiles in a couple of minutes. We have our sales value in our values box in our X axis we have our outlet name and we don't have anything in our legend nothing in our vertical multiples and nothing in our horizontal mul multiples so let me just show you this very quickly in if we put in let's take our stores again and i'm going to take our outlet name and i'm going to put that into our vertical multiples and i'm going to make this a little bit bigger and what this will do is it'll give you the stores individually in small little charts going vertically across the screen. If we move it down to horizontal multiples, it puts it in horizontally. And if they don't fit on the screen, you get this scroll bar here so you can scroll over 
and see the other charts that are actually available. So let's just move that up this time to legend. And now we can see each store by a different color. If we click, for example, Jack's, it's just going to highlight Jack here on your chart. And then to remove that filter, if we just click on the white area of the chart, the filter is removed. And if we click again on Lisa's Coffee Shop and just click away, the filter has been removed. What we're going to do now is we're going to make this chart more interactive. And the way you can make a chart like this more interactive is using hierarchy. Now there's two types of hierarchy. There's ad hoc hierarchy and there's hierarchy that you would have set up in your data model. And I'm going to show you that when we're doing pie charts. But for this example, I'm going to show you how to set up ad hoc hierarchy. Let's start by selecting employee and we're going to select the employee name. We're going to take the employee name and we're going to drag it down to the axis. Now when we dragged it down to the axis, nothing here on the chart actually updated. Let's take another filter and this time let's pull down our month. Let's also pull down our week number. Let's pull down our product. down to product description. So now we have added a number of different fields into our axis. So what we can do with our chart now is we can drill into our chart to get further insights and further analysis. So let's look at Amber's coffee shop. And if we click it once, it just brings us, it just highlights that one particular field. If we double click, this is going to drill down to the employee name. And what this has now done is it's gone into Amber's coffee shop and it's pulled down the sales by each employee. And we can see each employee is rather consistent when it comes to sales value. Let's double click in again to one of these particular employees. Let's double click into say Amber. And now you can see by month number, Amber sales by month number. And we can see here, month number two seems to be quite low. If we click into month number two, we can see week number five is quite low. And if we set, th set this up in another format, you could actually drill in and see was the employee on holidays on this particular week. And I know from our data set, that this particular employee was on holidays this week. So let's just drill in anyway to week number five, and we can see all of the products that were sold in week number five. So it goes down through by the outlet name, the employee name, the month, the week number, and the product description. So let's drill further back up. So to go back up, you press this little arrow that comes up here. Let's have a look at Mia's coffee shop. And we can see Kieran and Sam have sales very much the same. Top coffee shop. Again, all the employees have sales rather the same. Lisa's coffee shop. And you can see Dean has considerably less sales than Ava and Ronan. Now again, we could tie this more into a timesheet, but there we can see the months and how they seem to be doing each month. And we noticed March for Amber's Coffee Shop was quite high for the employee we picked as well. We can analyze that further later on. Let's click into a particular month. Let's click into month 10. And we can see on month 10, week 40 is quite low. So the employee could be on holidays on week 40. And week 44 is also quite low. So we might want to further analyze things by weeks to see what's going on by the particular weeks. And then you can click in and you can see what this employee is selling. And you can see that her best sales were for, Dylan's best sales were for flat white coffee with sales value of 768.75. So let's drill back all the way out of that again. And we're going to make this chart a little bit smaller. Now, when you have a chart a little bit smaller and you want to see it bigger, you have this little button up here that says pop out. And if you select pop out, it fills up the whole page like this. And you can pop this back in again. 
what you can also see then if we click on the chart and we go to and we go to our power view screen and we bring in the filters area so we can see I'm just going to make that bigger again for a moment so you can see that there is no filters on this particular view but there are filters specifically set up for the chart and these filters match what you have added to the axis here on this side they're in alphabetical order where on your access list here they are shown in the order in which the filter is dropped in so let's just have a look at this filter view as we filter a particular shop so let's look at Jack's coffee shop and we can see over here the outlet name the filter is showing that you're looking at Jack's coffee shop let's look at the employee so you'll see this employee name changing as we click into Lisa and that we have selected Lisa now we can see that month number three is quite high so let's click into the month and you can see that we have now selected March which is the third month and we can see that week number 12 is the highest week let's click into week number 12 and we can see that these are the products that she actually sold now I'm going to make a change here to this chart because if we just go up one week number 12 is quite high and week number 12 has come up as being quite high in let's look at Mary March and well week number 12 is pretty steady there let's go into a different store and let's see what it says about week number 12 for a particular employee month 3 is higher again and week 12 is higher again so I'm going to change this filter instead of now it's in the month number and next it will go into the week so I'm going to remove product description out of here and this time I'm going to go back up to my dates and I'm going to put in my day now I'm going to double click into and you'll see over here day has now come in and I'm going to double click into the 12th week and we can see the 17th of March seems to be a pretty high selling day and what day is the 17th of March well the 17th of March happens to be St Patrick's Day here in Ireland so that's why the sales on the 17th of March seem to be coming up much higher than any other days so that's our presentation of our demonstration of PowerView and how it can be used to explore data, how visualizations can be used to explore data, to identify trends and to see things that need, may need further analysis. As I mentioned, it depends on what version of Excel you're using or where you'll find PowerView and it seems to be more hidden in later versions. Now this may be because of the new features in Excel that allow you quickly analyze stuff through Power BI. So what's Power BI? Well, Power BI is a separate package, but it's been made up of these three power tools from Excel, Power Query, Power View, and Power Pivot, all bumped into one data visualizations package. It's a completely separate package, and it's something that we will look at in a different demonstration. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos. If you missed any of them and you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link below the video to the blog post and the blog post contains all three videos in this series, The Future of Excel. If you're watching this video on YouTube, I hope you will like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to share this video or the blog post with your friends and with your colleagues. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.